Welcome to To Mystic Womanhood. In today's video, we are going to continue our series on goodness. We are going to talk about something called a worthy character. This is a concept that comes from a lot of our concepts, and I don't have the book with me right now, but a lot of these concepts in the goodness series are coming from a book and pamphlets by the same name called Fascinating Womanhood. So we are going to cover a lot of those topics, and this is one of them, a worthy character. So basically, no guy wants a woman who's a bad person. I think we can all agree, you know, you don't want to get with a bad guy, and a guy doesn't want to get with a bad woman. So it it's, goes both ways in that. But this is more than just being like kind and honest and like a decent person. If you really want to attract a man and attract him on a deeper level with, with men, you do have to attract him in the more superficial way, you know, like he should think you're pretty, he should like you on a physical level, he should want you on a physical level. That's kind of the lighter, more superficial side of it. But in order for him to commit to you permanently, like marry you, he needs to see deeper things than just your looks and, you know, having a good time. You know, are you guys like compatible? Do you have fun together? You know, those are important, but there's also deeper things. Because when you're married to someone, you're going to have to face life's up and downs. And so a man wants a woman, literally, he wants a woman that he can secretly regard as better than himself. And here's what I mean. When I say secretly regard, you don't want it to be openly regarded. Because if it's openly clear that you're a better woman and he doesn't deserve you, then yeah, you shouldn't be dating him. You know, you should date a high quality guy and you should be a high quality woman. Like you guys should match there. But a man wants to marry a woman that he has kind of like a secret admiration for and that like deep down he kind of suspects she's better than him. You know, he's not going to admit it to other people, but kind of wants to like put her on a pedestal and be able to like really admire her. He wants to see solid virtues in her good characteristics, good habits. That's all a virtue is. It is literally a good habit. And so we're going to talk about some of the virtues that make up what I mean here. We already talked about one, that's the virtue of like purity, chastity, like not sleeping around. We talked about that in the last video, but we're going to go into the other ones because again, there has to be something exemplary about you. You know, you can't be nice and sweet and you know helpful just like every other woman there has to be something extraordinary about you and this is what we're going to talk about here so the first virtue that we're going to talk about is kindness but this is different than just being nice to people a true kindness has a certain regard for like every person you are nice to this person regardless of whether they're the waiter you know at, at your meal or they're the president, you know? It's like you you are nice to everybody. You don't treat people differently based on how they may treat you, you know, and what you can get out of it. This is also where like a lot of gossiping and drama, that's kind of a failure against kindness because again, a man wants a woman he could admire. And if you're over there telling him like, yeah, guess what happened to Susie? Her boyfriend dumped her and I was so glad because she totally had it coming and da 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 da. Like, a guy's not gonna admire you if you're sitting there like gossiping like that. And you know, there's drama, you know, don't start drama, do mean things to other girls, you know, maybe, you know, maybe there's a little envy there that you need to work on, you know, if you wanna get rid of some of that like desire for drama and stuff. But again, don't really delight in drama and things like that. This kind of leads us into the next virtue, which is compassion. We're going to do a whole video on compassion. That is a feminine and especially beautiful virtue in a woman, compassion. So we're going to go into that in another video. But suffice it to say, in for the sake of this video, compassion and kindness are a little similar. Basically, you don't want to delight in the misfortunes of others. A man will not admire you if you're the kind of woman that takes pleasure when other people have bad things happen to them. You know, so again, you need to get the envy under control. If you find yourself falling into this a lot, if you find yourself having a problem with this, it can be due to envy. And in order to kind of fight that, there's a Catholic saint, his name's St. John Vianney. He says, to get rid of envy, he says, seek to imitate the one you're envious of. So if you have a problem with that, look at the women or the people that you're envious of 
and figure out why do I envy them? Why am I happy when something bad happens to them? And you can often figure it out. You can go, well, that girl has really beautiful hair and I've always hated how my hair looks. Or that girl always seems to get a good date. I have so much trouble. All the guys I talk to ghost me and here she just goes on nice date after nice date. You know, I, I don't understand, you know? So it can be things like that. And in these examples, well, if that girl has nicer hair than you, what can you do to make your hair better? Can you get like a keratin treatment? Oh, too expensive? Okay. What can you do at home? Maybe do some research, figure out what's wrong with your hair. Is it curly and you're having problems with frizz? Is it straight and you want it to be curly? Like look into it and really do some research and fix it. You know, it's not shallow. Oftentimes we hesitate to fix things that we feel self-conscious about because we think it's shallow. It's not shallow, especially if it's making you envious to the point where you're taking pleasure in others' misfortune, then it's not a little thing and it is worth fixing. So there's that, you know, if it's the case of the girl that, you know, she gets all these nice dates and you don't, keep watching this video series, this will help with that. But, you know, look into it, read books about men, figure out how they think, try to understand why these men are not responding to you the way you want them to. Is it a problem with the guy? Are you just not evaluating men properly? You know, are, is your filter too loose and maybe you're letting in kind of lousy men? On the other hand, is it something you're doing? You know, are these good men and maybe somehow you're turning them off? It can be a danger to think that it's always your fault. So I don't want you to fall into that when it comes to like dating. But at the same time, I mentioned the book Fascinating Womanhood, that's a good book. Men are from Mars, Women from Venus, that's another good book. And then another good book I recommend, and again, this is another one of those, like, if you're a kid, don't read this. Why, pardon the language, Why Men Love Bitches by Sherry Argob. That is another good book. All three of those books are going to help you get a very well-rounded idea of men and dating. And so that will help you go very far toward, you know, having more luck with men, getting what you want from men. We're going off on a tangent here, but anyways, the next virtue, self-discipline. A man wants a woman who has, you know, some self-control. You know, try to get up on time. You know, no guy admires a woman who, like, sleeps in till 11 every day. She's kind of lazy, you know, because if this guy wants to marry you, he's probably thinking about having kids with you. And if you're lazy, he's going to be like, man, am, are my kids going to be dressed? Are they going to get baths? Are they going to, you know, is my wife going to make me food? You know, like... You want to have a certain self-discipline and again, you know, get up on time, have a daily routine, try to get a handle on your procrastination, you know, try to develop that. Self-discipline is the kind of thing that it's like a muscle, you know, you have to work it and develop it. Best thing to do is to just do something, one thing hard or unpleasant every day to kind of work out that self-discipline muscle. So for example, if you really like cream in your coffee, maybe that morning don't get cream in your coffee. That's one little thing to help your self-discipline. Maybe set a timer. If you normally spend, you know, two hours every night, three, four hours every night watching YouTube, maybe set a timer and only watch it for an hour and then go read a book or something. So little things like that can kind of help you develop that habit of self-discipline. The next thing, this is not really so much as a virtue, but the absence of a vice. No addictions of any kind, obviously alcohol, drugs, but even the what we call tamer ones. You know, everybody jokes about being addicted to their smartphone or being addicted to social media. If you feel like you have a problem with that, get a handle on it, you know? There's apps you can install on your phone that can kind of like monitor and like come and pop up a notification warning you like, hey, you've spent a lot of time on this. Do you want to log off now? Things like that. So you want to get that under control. And also women who are kind of addicted to social media and they're always on Instagram, they're always on Facebook, that's unattractive to men. They don't like women who are addicted to social media. So try to get a handle on that. The next thing, humility. We're going to talk about the balance for that self-respect in a few minutes. But on the other hand, you don't want to be arrogant. Feminism, I feel, while it had good parts, in general, modern day feminism has taught women to be kind of arrogant. There is this attitude of, well, men should love me however I am. And like, I don't know how to say this nicely. We'll have very overweight women 
kind of obese women, they will often, you know, be angry and demand that men should find them attractive. And, you know, that's arrogance. You know, you have to have a certain humility. You're not going to be everybody's type. Not every guy will be your type. That's the way it is. Going around telling men, you know, oh, I don't need a man. You know, I got my own and I don't need you. That's a little arrogant, you know. Now, you can say that to yourself, maybe, but, you know, because in a certain extent, the only man we really need is Christ. So, yeah, technically, you don't, you don't need a man. But um, it's kind of arrogant to go around telling men that. And, you know, it, it can be arrogant when you don't appreciate the things he does for you and you just take it for granted, like, well, of course you're going to pay for my meal or whatever, you know? So have a certain humility. You're not the center of the universe. None of us is. You know, have a certain appreciation, you know, for the things guys do. And then the other one is honesty. You know, obviously don't lie on your, if you're on online dating, don't lie on your profiles. If you're on a date, don't lie about your past. Don't lie about your family. Don't lie about things. And also, don't lie in other nonverbal ways. So, you know, don't cheat on your taxes. Don't go into a store and lie in order to get a discount. You know, there's certain places when you're shopping, you know, like certain times if you meet certain qualifications, you can get a discount or maybe you can get a return and get your money back in certain situations. Don't lie to get a discount or get a return when maybe you weren't entitled to one. Things like that, men will lose respect for you for. You know, if you brag to your boyfriend like, oh my gosh, I saved $200 on this dress because I said this and this, he's going to quietly think, well, that's not true. You lied to them to get a discount. How do I know you're not lying to me, you know, about something? So honesty, honesty is important. And again, our society is very, we're really into like white lies. We tend to think, oh, it's okay. It's okay to lie, you know, whatever. It's not okay. It's important to tell the truth. Now, if somebody is asking you something that they don't have a right to know, you can tell them I'm not comfortable answering that. Or, you know, it, depending on your relationship, if it's your boyfriend, you can go, that's none of your business. But um, in general, tell the truth. Don't lie. The next one, purity. We already talked about that. Patience, patience, you know, you want to, you want to accept things. Things don't go your way. Be patient about it. Wait for things to happen. Patience in regards to, you know, qualities men admire. Patience especially applies when you don't like how fast the relationship's going. Maybe you wish he would call you more or he would ask you out more. You know, like you don't want to wait to see him on the weekend. You want to wait to see him, you know, you want to see him earlier. So you call him up and you're like, let's go on a date. You know, doing that once or twice is fine. But if that becomes a habit, that can be annoying for men. You know, he's busy. He's got lots of stuff going on. You need to be patient and wait for him to call and wait for him to plan another date. And, you know, when you get farther along in the relationship, you have to wait for him to tell you he loves you. It's usually not good. It's usually best if you wait for men to feel ready to say that. Us women, we tend to emotionally move faster than men. And I think sometimes we can want to say it sooner than men do. And then that puts the guy on the spot and it's kind of awkward. And so I do feel like it ensures a better experience for everyone if you kind of wait for the guy to say it first. Again, it's not a hard and fast rule, you know, like you never, it, it depends. But in general, that can be an area where, you know, patience is needed. Further on after that, you know, you have to wait for a guy to propose. Maybe you and him are hitting it off really well. You really like him. He really likes you. And you know, you know he's going to propose eventually, or you're talking about kids, you're talking about getting married. You have to have patience. Wait for him to, to ask that question when he's ready, because no matter how good the relationship is, maybe, you know, maybe he decides, well, you know, we're not right for each other. I thought we were, but we're not. And then he has to break up. There is also a trend nowadays of women asking men, you know, proposing to men, women getting on one knee and proposing to men. That is a massive act of impatience and that is not good. Again, it puts a guy on the spot, just like if you say, I love you before him, it puts a guy on the spot. He will often say yes to the proposal just out of like embarrassment. And also men get a lot of satisfaction and joy out of planning the proposal. 
planning how they're gonna ask you to marry them. It's been said that the wedding day is the happiest day of a woman's life. And I once heard a man say that the proposal day is the day you say yes to him asking you to marry him. He said that was the happiest day of the man's life. So for the woman, it's the wedding day. For the man, it's the proposal day. Because he said he's already, the most amazing woman in his life has already, uh, has just agreed to marry him. That's like the best possible news he could get. So the proposal is a very special thing for a man. So don't rush it, you know, don't nag him or anything like that. You gotta be patient. Patience is needed for both genders. Men have to be patient with the physical aspect and the sex. They have to be, especially if you're saving sex for marriage, you know, men have to be patient and wait to sleep with you. But on the other hand, us women have to be patient and wait for a man to emotionally catch up with us and, you know, call us when he wants to see us, tell us he loves us when he's ready to say that, propose to us when he's ready to do that. We have to be patient and wait for the guy to do those, you know, milestones in the relationship. Because again, just as it's awful to rush a woman into sex, it's awful to rush a man into commitment. You don't want to emotionally rush men. It goes both ways, you know? Um, we always hear about, you know, men that try to rush women into bed, and we all know that's bad. You know, us women instinctively are like, ooh, I would not want to be rushed into sleeping with someone. You know, ooh, no, no. Well, it's the same for men. You know, if you try to emotionally rush them with, you know, too much closeness and too much, you're telling them you love him, you're giving him all these gifts, you're calling him, that that rushes a man in the same way um, that we talked about for women and you don't want to do that to them it's not right so anyways the next one moral courage you have to stand up for what you believe in if you're thrust in a situation where that is necessary this is different than what we have nowadays we have a certain false courage false moral courage which is really nothing but virtue signaling. People take it upon themselves and volunteer their opinion on certain hot button issues because they wanna look good, they wanna reassure themselves that they're a good virtuous person, and that's not what I'm talking about here. The true moral courage that a man will admire in a woman is when you are taking a stand and it's a difficult stand, you know, you are going to lose something by making that stand, or it's something that you didn't bring, you didn't choose it, you know, you didn't go on Twitter and you chose to say what you think about some, you know, controversial issue. You know, it happened at your workplace, you got put on the spot and you had to stand up for your beliefs, you know, or, you know, you're out with friends and, you know, somebody was ridiculing you about something and you had to stand up for what you believed in, you know? So situations like that, that's what I'm talking about. Not this, not this like moral posturing that we have now days. It's like fake courage. That's not what I'm talking about. But the real courage, the real moral courage, standing up for what you believe in, even when it costs you something, a man is going to really admire you for that. And that is part of this, like, this good character that I'm talking about. And the last one, self-respect. I spoke earlier about humility. You know, you don't want to be arrogant. However, this is the balance to that. You want to have a certain self-respect. You want to, you know, you don't let people cut you down. You know, if a man's saying something bad to you, if he tells you you're a prude because you won't sleep with him, you know, you just basically tell him, like, take a hike. It doesn't have to be mean, you know, but you have enough self-respect to, you know, stay strong in your beliefs, you know? Now, where does this self-respect come from? I'll tell you. It comes from having a clear conscience. You know, if you have been living your life to the best of your ability, and you can look yourself in the mirror every morning and, you know, be okay with what you see. Uh, if you can sleep well at night, um, you didn't do anything horrible that day that's like keeping you up at night, you know, and you're living your life as best you can, you know, and you're taking it day by day, then that will give you a certain self-respect. You know, you will be proud of yourself on some level. You will have peace within yourself because you'll know I am living my life the best way I know how. And people debate about whether, you know, there's a conscience or not, but everybody, regardless, if you study cultures around the world, throughout history, the same main concepts come up. Don't lie, don't steal, don't sleep with somebody else's spouse, 
don't murder, you know, those are basic things that is, it's like written in our psyche not to do. And when we do those things, you know, don't hurt someone, you know, without reason, you know, don't be envious and like hurt another girl just to make yourself feel better. You know, like how often have you maybe spread a rumor about a girl or maybe you borrowed her sweater and you deliberately put a rip in it and then gave it back to her and acted surprised, you know, you wanted to see that sweater be ruined so she couldn't wear it anymore, you know, little petty things like that, those are going to make you, you're going to lose respect for yourself, you know, long before others lose respect for us, we lose it for ourselves first. And this is not talked about, but nobody in the self-help industry talks about this, but a lot of what we know is low self-esteem is actually a lack of self-respect because people are doing things that they know are wrong. And, you know, it doesn't have to be major things. You don't have to be Hitler to wake up in the morning and not like yourself. It's It can be little petty things. Whatever you know isn't right, that will bother you. And when you look at yourself in the morning, you'll go, I don't really like myself. You, you'll look and you'll, you'll just, you'll know it in your gut. So again, to have this healthy self-respect, you know, stop doing anything you think is wrong. You know, you know, in your, your gut feeling, you're gonna know. Maybe you have a problem with envy, you know, maybe because you're envious of other girls, you always make little cutting comments that kind of tear down their reputation. Maybe you like to spread rumors. Well, then you're not going to really feel good about yourself because deep down, you know, that's not a good thing to do. So again, live your life as ethically and as honestly as you know to do. Listen to that little voice you know, Pinocchio called, you know, that movie, The Voice of Conscience, Jiminy Cricket. Maybe watch that movie and you'll see what I mean. But again, it's not a little cricket. You know, we all have a conscience. Now, our conscience can get warped, especially with the society around us. Your conscience is partly modified. I don't want to say it's created by society. It's not. Conscience is not a social construct. It's written into the heart of man. We are psychologically, by default, we have certain moral principles. However, those principles can be slightly modified by society around us. You know, this is how a lot of our sexual practices, things that used to be considered kind of off that you still kind of feel a little off about it you know that is another thing that our conscience gets this is why there is such a push to like you know legalize certain things or you know show it in movies and in the media because they're trying to silence this little voice of conscience because they think wrongly that oh this discomfort i'm feeling this lack of self-respect i I notice in myself when I look in the mirror or when I try to sleep at night and everything is silent and I have no distractions and I'm alone with myself. You know, oh, this, this guilt I feel, this shame, this is, this is society. It's not. The guilt doesn't come from society and it's not going to be fixed by society. Even if society threw you a parade for that thing you feel bad about, whatever it is, whether it's sex, which is a big one that society is trying to do this with, but whatever it is, even if society, everybody you knew, you know, hailed you from every corner about it, you would still feel that little gnawing, you know, they, they liken a bad conscience to like the gnawing of a worm. It'll still be there. You know, society didn't create that guilt feeling and it can't take it away. It's written into who we are. So really the only thing you can do is just stop doing that thing that makes you feel guilty. So anyways, that is the section on a worthy character, those are the areas and the good qualities that you need to work on. Obviously, you don't have to be perfect. You know, men know that you're going to have a bad day. They know that there will be times where you won't say or do something that was, you know, really the best you could have done. You know, they, they know. We all make mistakes and men know that. But in general, these are the, the things you want to be aiming for and you want to develop as much of these virtues and as and as to as high a degree as you can you know do your best just do your best as long as you're a woman that's doing her best to develop these qualities men will overlook the little the little faults here and there but in general you should be striving for this 
and men will very deeply admire you for it. And this is one of the big things that makes you wife material. This is what separates you. This is what separates the girlfriends, uh, the girlfriend material from the wife material. Um, a big part of it is this worthy character. A man wants to marry a woman that he can kind of look up to, you know? So anyways, that is the end of that. I hope that's helpful. If you have any questions, leave a comment and that's it.